Legal analyst Ellie Honig joins us now. Ellie, uh, first, can you give us a little insight into uh, who Mark P uh, Pomerantz is? That's what we're talking about here. Yeah, Jim. So Mark Pomerantz was a prosecutor with the Manhattan DA. He's now Jim Jordan's star witness. So let me explain how that happens. Now, Pomerantz, many, many years ago, was a federal prosecutor at the Southern District of New York, where later I would work along with Alvin Bragg, actually, who was a colleague of mine. Pomerantz came out of retirement a couple years ago to join the Manhattan DA's investigation of Donald Trump. By his own statement since then, Pomerantz has said he was essentially obsessed with nailing Donald Trump. Now, Alvin Bragg takes over as the DA about a year ago, in early 2022. Pomerantz brings Alvin Bragg a half-baked case relating to Donald Trump's valuation of assets. And Bragg says, it's not ready yet. What does Pomerantz do? He doesn't do more work. He quits and he goes on a publicity tour and he writes a book giving away all sorts of stuff that's happening inside the DA's office. Now, Alvin Bragg, many other former prosecutors, prosecutors associations came out and said Pomerantz is undermining the investigation. He's giving away inside secrets. His book is called An Inside Account. And now, sure enough, as a result of that, Jim Jordan's attention has been piqued. And so now Jim Jordan's going to be questioning Mark Pomerantz, trying to dig up dirt in front of the public. And so what are the House Republicans on the Judiciary Committee hoping to learn from Mark Pomerantz? Does it, is it going to have any so kind of effect an on the indictment? Witness. Yeah. Yeah, it shouldn't, but it, it'll be an interesting bit of testimony because on the one hand, Pomerantz has said publicly and in his book, he thinks Donald Trump's a felon. He thinks Donald Trump should be indicted for all manner of conduct. On the other hand, Pomerantz has said in his book and publicly, he never believed in the hush money case. He did not think there was enough evidence to charge that publicly. And I think one of the arguments is going to be Pomerantz is so obviously politically motivated. He came out of retirement to work for free. Like I said, he's obsessed with nailing Donald Trump. And I think the argument is going to be his political bias infected that office and the investigation that he was once part of. Um, and Ellie, let's talk about the potential legal peril for the president's son, Hunter Biden. His lawyers are scheduled to meet with Justice Department officials uh, this coming week uh, to talk about their long running investigation. There haven't been too many public developments in this case, but I, I, I suppose that may be changing. What could be next? Yeah, so this case has been pending somehow, Jim, since 2018, since the last administration. Here we are five years later. It's completely inexplicable to me how nobody's made a decision, yes or no, charge or don't charge Hunter Biden. This is not a complex case. This involves his individual tax returns and a sort of obscure firearms law. There's no way this should have taken so long, but we are now learning that his lawyers are going in to meet with DOJ prosecutors. A common thing that happens, you try to talk the prosecutors out of bringing a charge. And usually, Jim, that will happen towards the end game, although this has been dragging on so long. Who knows where they are? But look, someone's got to make a decision here. There's absolutely no reason this case needs to continue to linger and fester. And let me ask you, I mean, we just heard from Zach Cohen a few moments ago about uh, the situation down in Georgia. I mean, what do you make of uh, some of that reporting that the Trump legal team may have been uh, trying to use, apparently, or talking about using uh, apparently breached election data in Georgia to try to decertify a Senate race there and how that may fold into that Fonnie Willis investigation, the Fulton County DA's investigation down in Georgia. I mean, it sounds like an, a new wrinkle in that case, potentially. It's great reporting by Zach and assuming Fonnie Willis has that same evidence at her disposal. This could be evidence of a straightforward crime, essentially of hacking, of unauthorized access to a computer. And Jim, I think if it proves out, it could play into Fonnie Willis's larger case. It looks like she's gearing up to charge a fairly broad case involving an ongoing scheme, perhaps even a racketeering scheme to interfere with the election. So I think this could be an interesting and sort of tangible piece of evidence in that larger case. All right, Ellie Honig, uh, thanks so much. Really appreciate it.